everybody. How you doing today? Welcome to our Thursday Facebook Live. Just adjusting my light here. Today I am so excited. This technique is so cool. Um, I can't wait to show you. All right, now I'm having a little thing that says share this video with friends. Be the first to share this live video. Now in the past when I've done that, then it shares it to the group but then other people are sharing it to the group and we have like 10 shares in the group. So either I'll do it or somebody else do it. <laughs> Is anyone volunteering? I can't see any names or anybody talking. Maybe I'll do it, okay? So it's nice if you wanna share, but I think we had like five people do it last time. But oh there, hey. Hi Lisa, Jane. Oh, I saw some other people come in, but we were talking about this share button. We have 25 shares in the group. And I think we only need one. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Hi, Gina. Hey, Ulrika. Um, Facebook keeps changing things. I cannot even keep up. I can't tag anybody. I am having all kinds of trouble. So uh, anyway, but we're still here. Hey, Barbara and Frederica. Yeah, this, you guys are going to love this. This is so, so cool, especially with our teacup. I mean, it's perfect. There's Charlotta. I don't know if I said hi to you, Charlotta. I gotta do that. It's tradition. <laughs> so, um, yeah, today we're gonna make this little card. And I hope you can see. See that crackle? Oh, you're gonna like it. Hey, Brenda. Uh-oh, lost my spoon. In fact, I have several techniques to show you. I don't know if we'll get to them all. Hi, Jan. So, we'll do what we can. Um... I don't have a whole lot of announcements, except I am going to announce the winner of the Halloween challenge, but we're going to wait until a little bit. Okay. Hey, Leslie. So we'll do that in a little bit. Oh, Maz is there. Yeah. Oh, you guys are going to go nuts. There's Neppy. Hi, Neppy. You're crafting as you watch. No, that's fine. That's good. That's the, that's the idea. Ulrika, go to town. Hi, Loretta. Yeah, so we're, we have a couple different ingredients, so you'll see, and see if you want to get them, and there are probably other supplies that will work, and you may have them. Um, yes, Brenda, these make great cards. Hey, Maz, you're doing, oh, good. Oh, you know what, I did want to show you. I didn't, I still didn't get my Lazy Susan, but I did go ahead and seal this, and it made it slightly darker but I don't mind. I can hardly tell the difference. But I'm just spinning this thing around. I'm loving this. So I can't wait to get the smaller ones, but I think it's going to be November. So anyway, see see what you guys think. Maybe you found some too. There's Loretta and Monica. Hi. I can't even remember who I already said hi to. All right. Well, so what we're going to do today, I told you we're going to make this uh, little card. Um, we also have the winner of the Halloween challenge, which we'll wait in a little bit. There's Mary Louise. You clock out of the craft room at three. <laughs> Good luck with that. Waiting for a paycheck. <laughs> uh, we do have a new blog post up. Um, we have five new projects. Well, actually, we, we debuted the projects at the release party, but um, we have now the tutorial. So if there's anything that you see, you know, I'll be sharing them in the next couple days. And if you see that you want to know how, how they were created, just click on over to the designer's blogs. You know, you go to my post. I have the pictures of the five projects. And then just click on the, um, the text that will take you to the um, team's projects. And then you'll see how to create them. They keep their tutorials on their page. It just makes it a lot easier. So in case you don't ever do that, please do. Because there is a wealth of information and all kinds of techniques that I learn from. So I am really grateful to my team. They're amazing. And thank you. All right. Hey, Rosemary Meadows. So um, I think that's all. I'm going to wait until about quarter after, and if I forget, somebody tell me, which could happen. Hi, Angela, uh, and then we'll announce the winner of the Halloween Challenge. We also have a lot of other stuff going on, and we do have the 5,000 member giveaway. Hi, Miriam. 
And so we'll be announcing that kind of, we'll spread it out a little bit so we don't have, you know, a big old list of people. We'll do like one every, um, every live show. So tune in to find out who wins because it could be you. Wouldn't that be fun? You should see these prizes for the uh, 5,000 giveaway are pretty good. Hi, Lorraine. We did decide on the last live, I think it was, or two, um, that we are going to do three prizes instead of one grand prize. Then you have more more chances to win. So the, I'm going to be posting a question up in the fan club. So you have to be in the fan club to win. So if you're not a member, go join and make sure you answer the questions because we've got three people in there right now and they're just, they didn't answer the questions. So, you know, if they don't do that within a week, we're going to release them and hope they come back and answer the questions. <laughs> but um, there are a lot of events, of events coming up. Um, there is, uh, we have a free Ornamentally Yours um, class. That's like a four, three or four day class. And uh, I'll be posting that up. Well, I already did post it. You have to go to the group to get to be part of it. So go ahead over to ornamentally yours Facebook group and there's a picture of and everything um gotta be in it to win it that's right Mary Louise <laughs> so um anyway that's what's happening so we will we will be posting these things as they go I'm trying to design like my deck next set of dies or do the end of the month but I've got my daughter coming I'm trying to get it done I'm going to my mom's so anyway got a lot of irons in the fire right now plus we have something coming to you in December which is going to be huge well the end of November December so stay tuned for that but lots going on all right so there's Mitziana all right well I'm going to turn the camera down um, again we're making this project there are several techniques you're going to learn today actually but the main one is the crackling and it's hard to uh, show it all in one step because things have to dry. So I kind of have them prepped. So um, new dyes, any hints? Well, I'm designing them now and they were approved. Um, let's see. They're kind of different, actually. Uh, well, I can't tell you. I can't give you a hint because you don't know about the one before it. But they're different. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to tease you, but... I don't want to get in trouble. I, you know, like, you know, I signed a thing. I can't tell you. But there are three. The next one you're going to be very excited about. I can finally almost tell you about that one. So, yeah, you're going to like it. I'm pretty sure. So, all right. Well, I'm going to turn the camera down and then let's announce the winner because I've already been talking for too long. All right. Dang. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help it. You know, I don't want to go to jail or whatever. <laughs> Not go to jail, but you know, it, you guys have to, it, it has to make you want to, want to do it. Want to be here. So <laughs> gotta leave, leave something. Right. Oh, yay. Right. Okay. We got comments so far. How much money should you set aside? Um, hmm, let's see. I'm not sure of the prices on everything. But you might want to set aside some. <laughs> get the main thing and then you can go from there. Okay. I don't know if I get a fine. I don't want to find out, really. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm, in some ways, I go by the rules. <laughs> it's some things. Announce the post went live. Oh, okay. This post went live? Oh, the, the winner. Oh, okay. Announce, announce. Okay. The winner is L.J.K. Miller, also known as Leslie. You are the winner. So you will be getting a package from me in the next, well, probably in the next week. Okay, you're the winner of the Halloween challenge. Your project was amazing, but I want everyone to know we always do random. You want it all. You will want it all. You're going to get something, Leslie, for free. Coming to you in the mail. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Thanks, Mitziana. <laughs> all right. 
I'm going to turn the camera down while you are con congratulating Leslie. All right, here we go. Whoa. Every time this gets stickier. I don't know why. All right, well, I, I am happy that it's not, um, it didn't get stopped. And I still have my, uh, my camera on. So this is good. Okay, let me go over what it is all that we're going to use in today's project. All right, we have some thermo web. We have an embossing folder. We've got the die. All right, starting off, this is the teacup die. And I haven't used every part of it today, but I'm using the teacup, teacup shape, the spoon, and the little tea bag thing. And I wanted to show you, I can't get my Tim Holtz thing to work because I was going to staple this little tea bag. This is my string that I use for my tea bag. So I thought, oh, I should use the little the little case here. So look at little it holds the string. But I couldn't get it to staple through the map board or through paper or anything. I did it one time over here and that was it. So I don't know what happened to it. I'm going to have to fiddle with it. I put new staples in, but anyway. All right. So, let me see here. Um yeah, okay. Looks like it's even advancing. So this is the technique that we're going to do today. So let me show you what you're going to need. And I didn't put everything over here, but we're doing more napkin technique. And remember I showed you this the other day. I love this one. I mean, this looks like a teacup, doesn't it? It looks like china. So we're going to use a napkin. And that's how we cut this out. And then this was kind of an afterthought, so I distressed it with some silver ink. Um, but I'm going to use paint for this. You probably could use ink. I don't know. Now here is um, what happened with this. Now this is the project we did last time. And I want to try this one. I made another little insert. But what happened was I decided to crackle... And this is what I use, DecoArt Media Crackle Glaze, and it works really cool. I thought maybe we would do this. I want to paint this one brown. I don't know what I did with my brown paint, but it's going to be the same idea of what we do with this. So I'm going to distress and age this, and I think it's going to be really look fallish because it's kind of bright, which I don't mind. Now this I had kind of a disaster with. I painted the inside. I did it with green and yellows and I didn't like how it went with my papers. It was too bright and light. So then I took some orange paint and it was really bright. I mean, too much. So then I took some brown ink and kind of went over it and weathered it down a little bit. Uh, it's still a little bright, but I, I can tolerate this. <laughs> but I think if I weather this, it's just gonna have a really cool effect I don't know if you can see it, but there is crackle on here, okay? And the way it works is, and we'll do it in a minute, but how much stuff you put on it depends, that that determines the size of the cracks. So if you put it on thinly, you're going to have little cracks. If you put it, glob it on pretty good, you're going to have big cracks. So we'll take a look at that in a minute, because I pre-crackled some, just so we didn't have to wait. And then I just put it on a white card base with a little light blue behind it just because I had some that like perfectly matched. And then, uh, as I said, I cut out this little tag and I lettered that and just put that on there. And this is a tea bag that I just tucked in. See that? I didn't tuck it, tack down yet because I wasn't sure where I wanted to put it. But this, this is um, iced tea, which I didn't notice until I got home, but I actually might drink this because I don't drink hot tea, but I might drink cold tea. Then you just tuck it in and then you can send that to a friend and it's like going, going to their house and having um, tea with them, kind of. And then the spoon, I embossed it and then I used some silver ink. And I still have some of this in the Etsy store. I think I have five or six uh, jar bottles of this so if you're interested they're over in the Etsy store what I like about it is it's light it doesn't 
I didn't have to actually emboss it. It's it's silvery, it's kind of metallic-y, but it's not a heavy duty coat. And I don't know, I wiped it off and it was kind of like a wax, like it dried right away. So I was kind of excited about that. Okay, so happy I have we issues too. <laughs> All the time I have issues. Mm. Okay, so let's get going on this. All right, so what I did was, first I took a napkin. Let's just move this stuff. So let me just show you again. All right, here is the die. This is the teacup die. Here is how I cut this out, and we'll do that as we get going, but just so you see what it looks like. I used uh, these 3D foam squares from ThermoWeb to bump up my little sides here because uh, the tea bag has dimension so it would be you know popping up and I just thought it looks nice to have the the dimension there so um, yeah that's how I did that and then to emboss the spoon handle and I do have three of these in my Etsy store I saw that they had um, they were expired and I had them in there so if anybody wants them they're five dollars and they're discontinued so um, but what I did was I just laid my spoon on my um, embossing folder, and or I guess I did it that way, and ran it through, and it looks like, you know, the handle of a spoon. It goes a little longer, but, you know, sometimes some of them come all the way down to here, so I kind of liked how that looked. But you could use any folder that you have that has a small pattern that would work. So there's that. There's that. And let's get into the napkin stuff here, okay? So when I took it apart, I had a piece that looked like this, okay? I took the napkin apart, and if you want to see how to do this, I have another video where I show from the start how to do the napkin um, technique. So basically, you take your napkin, we'll just go through really quickly, and you can see it's thick. There's a background here. So you just peel off these other layers. Um, this one has two. I save these and I use them for napkins or tissues or whatever. But then you've got this nice piece. And now some napkins, the patterns are just contained in the square. But this is an all over print, which is really nice if you want to do like a journal cover or uh, something big. You know, you don't have an interrupted uh, you know, fold here. So you can just take your journal cover and do the whole big thing if it's big. So I cut mine into squares just to make it easier. And then I took some scrap mat board. So these are just extra leftover pieces of mat board that I was, you know, had left over, I think probably from cutting a teacup. And I took my deco art, deco page, page, matte, whatever this is, <laughs> glue sealer finish. We used it kind of as all of these things in this, um, use them for cleanup. That's a good idea. I know, don't you love that napkin? Probably at least hotels over here have them when you stay over. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you can, okay, I'm getting too into it here. I w I'm trying to stay on track because there's, there's just a lot of tips in this, so I want to make sure and tell you all of them. So the first thing I did was I took my paintbrush and, gee, let me turn my little spinny rack and get my paintbrush. I like to use a big one because, uh, you know, it's you're doing a lot and fast. You know, you want to do it, you want to get your napkin on before it dries. So if we wanted, you know, if we were doing a 3D teacup, I probably would do the front and the back, or maybe I would paint it, but and it, we could even do this just real quick so you see. Let me get them thing down here. It's, it's kind of goopy. All right, and just to catch everybody up if you weren't here for this. All right, so you would just take your stuff, paint it on, just glob it on. You do have to be a little bit careful because this tissue is really, once you get down to that third layer there, it's pretty thin. So, you know, don't be rough with it. Also, if you're a perfectionist and you want 
no wrinkles on it, then I don't know, maybe you wanna iron it. This one is pretty flat and I think that's just gonna stay on there just fine. Just lay it down and pat it. Maybe you could use a brayer, I didn't even do that. And then you're just gonna take this and paint over it again. Now the only thing about this technique is, you know, it takes a little while to let it dry, but not that long. You know, I had several projects going on at one time and by the time you finish one, the next one's ready to go. I'm just loving this stuff. And you know, if you have Mod Podge, the mat, that works too. It's just I bought this big thing of it and I wanna use it. And I do like how this comes out. They're, they it doesn't wrinkle. So you just kind of do the middle first and then brush out to the sides. And if there are any wrinkles, it may, uh, you know, squish that out. And so it's nice and flat. But um, I would say don't go over it a million times because you'll tear it and then you have a big white spot. So uh, the other thing is to put your brush right away into, uh, you know, water because it will stick. All right. So now we have... You know the front and the back this one is uh, not I didn't do the uh, treatment to it this stuff now this is really thick it's called crackle glaze I don't know if you guys can see that okay um, yes you could make a lot now let me also say this one I did I use paper on the back of this I didn't use matte board but I just happened to have it hanging around and it was an experiment so you could use it on anything this is you know it's just a little thinner that's all but it works the same way this technique is gonna work as long as you have the napkin as a base and honestly I wondered because I didn't know if the crackle medium was meant to kind of react to a paint but it doesn't it it works with just a napkin and it just take I guess the surface just kind of you know crinkles up and then you can put things in that spot so the next thing well you know what let me just paint it on the back because this one does not have the crackle and you're not gonna see this I left this overnight and that is how I got the crackle. I don't even know if you guys can see that here. I think really we're only gonna see it when we when we put the um, paint in the cracks. But um, this is, like I said, it's really thick. It's like a jelly almost. Not quite, but... So I'm just gonna clean out my brush, kind of. This water is pretty bad. But, you know. Did you see that? Oh yeah. My delay can use saran wrap to aid the smooth. Oh, that's a good idea, vet. You had somewhere to layer plastic wrap over it as it helped it not tear the napkin. Oh yeah. See, the it doesn't bother me to have the wrinkles. I mean, you can't really tell. This is a busy pattern anyway. So, okay. So the next thing we're going to do is take this gloppy stuff, crackle medium, and we're just going to paint over the napkin and like I said if you do a heavy-handed job you're gonna have big cracks and I think naturally you just get a mixture of both you know if you start it like in the middle and then you go up here or down there you know you're gonna have a range which I like because that looks really kind of I think they call it crazed in the um, world of China, which <laughs> could apply to the world today also. But um, let's not talk about that. <laughs> oh my lord, there are days when I regret living near DC. <laughs> Too much. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So then I would just let this dry. Like I said, I let it dry overnight. And I was pleasantly surprised to come down and find out, hey, it did it. Now here's another one that I've done. And that, I tried, I tried a couple different things on it and that got a little dark, I felt like. So this over here I did not do, but this is the paper. I just used cardstock. So you can see, your sister works as a picture restorer, does the exact opposite. She takes off the crackled glaze slowly and carefully takes off huh well I don't know but I, 
you know, that's the thing. The supplies, you can just try whatever you want with it, and whatever works is good. So let me just clean this up a little bit. All right. So here is the one. This I'm going to put over here. Let me get a piece of... And I'm using my release paper from... Um, an Etsy label to let this dry because both sides are now wet so I'm gonna put this over here but I'll show you at the end it's not gonna you know it doesn't look it, it doesn't look any different it takes I don't know how long because I came back probably 12 hours later and it had magically transformed and I was so excited all right so here is one that had the treatment and this is what I did last night and I don't know if you can see it but now we're going to try our technique. Now, I one time I used, um, what did I use? Gray ink. And now this time I'm going to try gray paint. Um, I did that on this one, and I liked how it came out. So I'm going to use that again. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit out here. It's kind of thick. You can use whatever you have. This is going to dilute it a little because I, let me see if I have another, yeah, here's another brush. Okay, let's just use this one. Oh, Dynasty brush. No, that's my good one. Oh, uh, shoot. I thought I had another one. Well, this is kind of big, but all of my brushes are now like a mess. Okay, so I think you could do black. That might be kind of cool too, but Let's see what happens. This brush is really stiff. Probably had um, <laughs> crap. It had some kind of stuff it wasn't supposed to have in it. So I just paint over everything first, and then just make sure you have like a an old rag or something standing by, because you're gonna wipe it off. And that's all it is, really. And let's hope that it does wipe off. Yes, look at it. Ah, can you see? All right, let's get most of it off. Oh, I love it. Now this is a little bit dark, but I think I had to do it a couple times, you know, and you probably could wet it, but I'm not going to because I want to see. Yeah, that'll lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, that's really brightening it up. Give it a little elbow grease because... You want this to... Oh, I love this. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Oh, yes. I think I'm going to need some more deco art. All right. Let me hold it up so you can see. Isn't that amazing? Can you see it, guys? Look at the crackles in here. I love it. Ah! It's like... I don't know. I don't even know how to compare it. But it's beautiful. Okay. Let me put that in there, too. And just get some of this junk out of here. Man, I am such a slob. Oh well. I don't think I need it anymore because I don't think I'm going to be painting or doing anything else. We're going to be cutting. All right. Now, that's pretty dry. It should be. It should be dry because we wiped off most of it. It feels a little wet over here. But that's not going to be on my die. So now you can see up here it looks shiny and then not, well, I guess it is all shiny. It's just so pretty. Can you believe that? Ah, crackle china, guys. Okay. And we just happen to have a fun little shape that makes a teacup. All right, so let's let's do this. All right, I'll, let, I'll use my napkin to blow my nose. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take this and lay this down, and we might as well do a crackled spoon. Why not? I mean, it's right there. We have the room. Just make sure that you you know you're gonna cover all of your area. And just cut it like you would. 
you know, right side facing because that's going to kind of seal your edges. I like how that looks. All right. I can't wait to see. Oh, yes. Now it's a little sticky. Oh, no, it's not. A little bit. I wonder if it's because it was wet. Yeah, see, it didn't quite. I think that's what it was. Well, now if you get something like that, just take a file and go in there and file that down. Fine. Another handy dandy thing on my wall of tools. All right, I might even save this just because, I mean, wouldn't that be pretty to frame it? That doesn't really mean anything, but I love the spoon. See, you couldn't go around it though. I don't know. I just think it's pretty. Okay. Yeah, a little bit came off on here. So maybe, you know, if you can wait, wait. Let it dry all the way. But, you know, you could assembly line this and do a lot at a time. So if you're doing craft shows like, like Leslie is and other people, you know, you can crank them out pretty fast. And if you were doing a craft show, I probably wouldn't do it out of the mat board just because it's more money unless you have a lot of scraps that is so pretty I love that ah that would be pretty with a plain teacup you know all right and I love that too oh and you could get two of these out of it because you know you could just cut it off here if you weren't going to use it as 3d oh look at that oh I just love this project. All right, now the other thing that I did was, uh, where did my silver pen go? I had a couple, I had a Sharpie. Oh, here it is. Okay, so there is one trick to the cup. Um, just let's compare them here. So what I did was I, I did do this little line here, and the way that I did that was I took my die-cut packaging and I cut a clear piece, okay? This is just the same die, just cut out of the packaging that it came in. I, I don't know if you can see it because it's clear, but um, I do need another thing because I don't want this to go on my desk. All right, so we have this, and if you had cut this out of paper, what you would do and you can do this just for kind of the effect to make it look 3D. I didn't try the Sharpie, so let's try that one this time. So I just took this and flipped it. And I did this same technique when we um, had our class from Australia. So sorry if you're seeing this again. But I'm just going to hold that down and go around the edge here. And make sure you stay tight to the curve because this is bumpy, so you could miss where you're going. Now, I it's not that easy to see that, but it gives you the 3D kind of idea. And then you can go ahead and go down here too and do another one, you know, if you want, but you don't have to. Just so that's like sitting on the ground. It gives that idea. And then if you want to go around the edge, you can do that. You know, but that's optional. All right, so there is your teacup. Now, also, if you wanted to go around and maybe rub a little bit more around the edges to shade it a little more, that would probably be cool too. So that's how you get your cup and your crackled effect. Isn't that fun? And what I probably would do is take my Sharpie just because it's silver and you know go around the edges like this now I did want to show you how I made that embossed see because I cut it out of this it which I like too and you could reverse but I'm just gonna cut another spoon out of plain mat board and I'll show you how to do that embossing thing well so much for clean hands. Highly overrated anyway. And that just kind of finishes it off nicely, I feel like. Okay, so let's, um, I might have, 
Oh, I do. I have a spoon already cut. All right, let's just do that because you saw how to cut it. You know how to do that. Okay, so to do your embossed spoon, what you're going to do is get your embossing folder right here. Okay, and now this is the, the one I was showing you. But you could use any one that where the pattern would work. You know, this one, it just kind of lines up nicely, and it's kind of delicate, floral. You know, it looks like it could be on a spoon. So, but there's others. So I'm going to emboss it first. So what I'm going to do is stick it in the folder. You can emboss or deboss. This is, uh, this is, let's see. Yeah, we're going the right way. I think I might just do that far this time. Oh, I do like those little dots. Anyway, you're just going to put that in your folder. All right, get your big shot again. And you're going to need your multi purpose platform. But you're not going to use any of the tabs. Matte board is thick. Are you guys there? Will you show how you cut out the slit for the tea bag? Yes. Well, you know what? I can do that, Neppy, but it is um, matte board. So, yeah, I'll show you. Hang on. Let, let's just do this, and then I'll show you how to do the slit. All right. So, I'm just going to lay this in my little area here and I've got my multi-purpose platform with no tabs an embossing or a cutting pad the folder with the thing in it the spoon and then I'm gonna try not to move it and just roll that through actually you know what there's a tip for this what I like to do because sometimes you get a line after you go over that um, I'm gonna put this back here and just lay that a little bit shy of the folder and that is going to make a gradual mark on it and it's not going to be this stark like line where your folder stopped see see how that's nice and actually I didn't even go far enough that's there but it's not wildly standing out but that's okay that still looks cute all right, so that's how we embossed it. Okay, and Neppy, let me just show you while I'm thinking about it. All right, what what I would what I would do now? I don't know if I would do it at a mat board, but if I did it at a paper, all I did was I laid it on my little mat. Can you guys see? Okay, this is um buffering or something. Are you guys still there? I don't know what's going on. My, um, it says I'm live. All right, I'm going to keep going. I don't know. My thing froze. Okay, I see little, oh, there we go. I don't know what happened there. Well, anyway. All right, so I would just take my knife and I would go, I would start like a little bit, you know, if you cut the whole thing, you're going to cut it off. You don't want to do that. So I just like placed it on the line and used that for a guide and then pull through. And you're not going to get it on the first time you'd, and you don't need to um, because you want to have the, you want to be careful with it. So if you have to go over it a couple times, if you're doing it on paper, it probably won't work the first time, but this is matte board, so I'm trying to be careful and not cut myself. <laughs> you guys would kill me. So let's see if that went through. Yeah, so we've got a slit, but see, this is thick. So I don't recommend, I wouldn't have anything sticking up out of here. It's just too thick, but paper I would. And that's what I used the last time. I was just using the mat board as an example for the crackle, which I think came out great. All right, so now let's do our little spoon. So what I did for that was I used my 
silver blends and I just squeeze some out. You hardly need any and this is a whole ounce. This is these are such a good deal guys I have to say they're eight dollars this stuff is gonna last you forever and you can use it kind of like a rub and buff like that that's kind of how I would equate it here okay um, so what you're gonna do is now I just did this not too long ago don't load it up too much but it doesn't even really matter because you're gonna wipe off a lot of it and you're just gonna you know go over this and it will be silver it's so cool And it's just, you could do the front and the back. I, I had it on this card and I didn't think that it would be needed to do it on the front and back. But I do the sides. It's just easy to go over it. I also have these styluses if anybody, I, I like them. But, you know, a lot of people have their applicators. Everybody gets their favorite tools and that's good. As long as they stay, stick, stick around. All right, so we've got our little, just make sure it's, you know, you have an even coat, you don't have fingerprints or anything. And then you're just gonna take a paper towel and you're gonna wipe this off. Oh shoot, now it's stopped again. I don't know what's going on, guys. Can you see me? Now it's kind of back. I see one little heart. All right, and then you just kind of buff it. Okay? And that will give you this nice little spoon. And it makes it shinier, too, I feel like. And the pattern really stands out. And then the other nice thing is, like, when you, you know, put your hand over it, this already had a little bit, but, you know, it doesn't come off maybe a little bit it's kind of waxy okay all right i guess you can see me i don't know it's like frozen it's thinking but anyway here they are aren't they cute all right so now we have the spoon and the cup we have this and we have this i just made a little card base here so i'm just going to use my thermo web little this thing tape runner I hardly ever use these but they're pretty handy so I just you know this is an a2 card and I just cut like a little background you could you know you could go ahead and kind of deuce the edges well, let's try that that might be pretty hopefully a little stick anyway I mean we already have stuff on it let's just give this a little edging For interest. So what are you guys working on? I know some of you have some shows. Um, Christmas presents, is anybody that brave yet or forward thinking? I'm not. We're just figuring out our Thanksgiving plans, which sounds like none. Um, the kids are all not around. Um, my son and his wife and their baby going to Texas, and my daughter, the nurse, is on call, and my other daughter in Connecticut is not coming down. She'll be here this weekend, so it'll be good to see her. She's bringing the baby. So that will be cool. And then Marianne is going to her new in-laws. For Thanksgiving because they do a big big deal every Thanksgiving that's like their holiday and they also invited us which was very nice but I don't know what we're gonna do a couple of years ago we went on a cruise but we won't be doing that this time <laughs> too bad yeah I like that oh that makes that pop a little more so there's that okay and then what I did was um this was a really cool thing my friend Kimberly, she has a program that can make fonts out of your own handwriting. 
And so that's what this is. So I went ahead and um, I made some words out of my own handwriting. I mean, it's so nice and fast. You just type it out and then I've got all these little messages here. So I'm not sure what I wanted. Let's do thank you because you can always use that. Let's see what can fit. Uh, it might be a little tight. I'll do thanks. So I'm just going to freehand this. I might regret that. But it's like, why? I have a trimmer. Why would I ever do it by hand? But I kind of like this look. All right. Yeah, it does look homemade. Okay. And then what I did was I stapled this to my tag. This one's pretty thick, so I'll probably just glue it on there. And I will cut this off. So again, I'll just trim it. And then like, see, so you have another one. Isn't that nice? I don't know which one I like better. I think that one. So this would be nice to bump up too. Let me get out my little squares here. And these are, I'm using a lot of ThermoWeb today. I'm using my tape runner, my foam squares, and what was the other thing I used? I can't remember. Something. Anyway, so happy to see you using it. Yes, I did, Kimberly. Let's just wait until I have the additional two to use. I know, I was on a frenzy last night doing this. You know, I have to do them when I'm on a roll. Had to do it. It was fun. Thank you, Kimberly, for letting me... She got me all enthusiastic about it. <laughs> so, I'm just sticking that... Oh, I did love you. I meant to do thanks. Oh, well. I'll give that to one of the kids. Alright. Or, I don't know. Maybe my mom. I don't know what happened to thanks, but I just cut out the wrong thing. All right, so if you did this out of paper, that's where you would tuck this in. Uh, I do have this cute little thing with string, and so that is what I stapled on, but my stapler is not working. So you would just kind of set that there and then tuck your spoon in, and you've got this adorable little card. And you can put the spoon however you like. You know what I mean? All right, this is how it should look, but we're having some malfunctions here. And again, shoot, I'm buffering or whatever. So I can't see you guys. Your handwriting is lovely, thank you. What is the name of the program? I, I don't know, Jane, I don't have the, uh, I don't have it. Maybe Kimberly wants to, it scans something scan along or scan I don't know she converted it for me and I'm very thankful right now I don't need any more technical issues <laughs> so that is how we made our fun little card and I just love this crackle technique so I'm going to be crackling probably everything in sight I mean the cover of my journal I can't wait to do that I gotta find my brown I brought it over here, and I don't know what I did with it. Mm, it's called nutmeg, and I thought, that's going to be pretty. So I am just going to rub some in here and kind of distress that. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll finish that up on Tuesday, because there's a little more I want to do with it. And these came out great, and I also had... Um, I wanted to make some tags to go in here. I think this will be really, really fun. All right, so we have projects for a couple, a little while here. All right, well, I'm early. Anything else? Oh, Kimberly, what did she say? Scan a hand, that's what it is, okay. Yeah, the crackle technique is fun, I know. It really is. I mean, that looks real to me. 
well, I mean, it's, I know it's not a china cup, but it could be. This one even came out better. So I think if you played with how much stuff you put on there, you know, you could get different effects. But I like, I like how that one came out a lot. Well, they're about the same, I guess. But see, everyone is different, which is cool. I even like this little tag. You know, you could just punch a hole in there, too, and tie it. Anyway, I'd be happy to make more fonts. Oh, How about shading the sides of the cup? Yeah, I thought about that. I could do that. Um, let's. I wonder how that would work with the silver. Let's try that while we're at it. I don't want to ruin my... Uh, Let's see what happens. Because that's great paint. But let's see what happens if we do this. Well, see, that's just... Oh, that's making it silvery. That's kind of cool. Ooh. That could be a nice thing. Alright, let's see if it wipes off. I don't want to wipe too much off. You could go over it again with the... Yeah, that you could see that, I think. You know, you just want to go with a light hand. You could even take some more of the gray paint and do that again to get your shading. And you could go around here, too. You know, or here. That might be... Let's see how that looks. This is where it's like, nope, don't push your luck. <laughs> Yeah. Or maybe it would be darker inside here. I don't know. However you want to do it. It is a little messy on your hands, but that does not bother me one bit. Okay, you used to crackle things in the 80s. It does. It comes back. So I do recommend this um, crackle medium, but you know, if you have other stuff, you might just have to fiddle with it a little bit. I've never had it work before, honestly. So I do like this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm buffering again. So I'm going to go, guys. But thanks so much for coming. And um, I'll see you on Tuesday, as far as I know. And we'll do another fun little project. Okay? I hope you have a great weekend. And uh hope you get some time for yourself to just step away from the world and de-stress because I think we all need that right about now. I see the hearts and the thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good night, UK friends and, and international friends that um, stayed up late to watch. Thank you. I appreciate it. And if you haven't joined the fan club, make sure you go ahead and join the Eileen Hall fan club because we have lots of giveaways coming up. You want to get in on them. Okay? All right, guys. See ya. Bye.